finish him. I'm gonna have a sway in a front headlock position. You can use any go behind you like to use. I'm just gonna show a basic one. Where my shoulders are gonna take up and back and drag his elbow out. And then I'll use my knee initially and I'll switch my head from your side to far side. Just to block his elbow. And from here I'll use my right hand to go behind his, his uh, tricep. My left hand around his butt. I'll start to work my body to the typical riding position. Now what he's gonna do in that MMA conversation, he's probably gonna start to build, right? He doesn't want to yeah, he's gonna build right away. So as he does this, what I want you to do is focus on grabbing a tight waist and wrist control of the near wrist. And unlike what we typically do in jiu-jitsu where we look to get the near side hook in, I'm actually gonna to look to throw in my far hook. So as I kick over, I'm looking to throw my left hook in as a shallow hook and my right hook in as a deep hook. Now he's still strong here. So what I wanna do is keep an underhook here, ear to ear pressure, and then watch my right arm. My right arm is gonna sweep under his leg. And as I do that, it's an easy way to break the guy down. And then we can start working our attacks from the top position, uh, from the back position rather. Let's take a look at that again. So I have sway in the front headlock. Put the drag him, head switches, hand replaces, and I work to his back, he starts to do it. So from this position, what do we do? I don't want him to hit a hip block with this arm, so I want you to focus on putting pressure on the wrist. And then you're gonna swing your top hook in first. This should be the configuration, shallow hook, deep hook. Ear to ear, wrist block, and then from here we can start attacking the head and looking to finish. That'll be the first one. Let's try it out for you guys. One, two, three. That's pretty good, everybody. Not bad. It's pretty bad, but oh. <laughs> if you stay squared with the guy, you're gonna fall off every time. You're gonna slide down his body. That's the idea. You gotta stay up on an off angle. So when he builds up, there's many things you can do. This is just an option, right? I grab his wrist. Look at my left hook goes in first. This is the angle I want with a pinned wrist. He, he can try to lift this leg, but I'm attacking his base while he's doing it. I'm not just standing here waiting for him to buck, buck me off, right? This is just a momentary control. So I jump up, I interlock my legs, and I make sure that I have a short hook and a deep hook. Now, if he's really strong, this might be hard for you, Sven. Yeah. I apologize in advance. Yeah. If he's really strong, you can hold him. Yeah. I'll attack here and here. <laughs> he goes down every time. <laughs> And then from this position, we can start to attack. If he stays on the overarm side, this is a traditional attack for, for the strangle. If he falls to our underarm side, we know that we prefer this side. Because it gives us all of our traps. We want that side. the time of it. When he starts to build to a so try high position, the biggest key is that I, I don't just let go with my right arm and allow him to block my hip with this, this right hand here. I want to make sure that I have wrist control. Again, I'm not throwing my right hook in first. I throw my right hook in first, it's easy. I'm probably going to slide off. I want to control my the far hip first. So look how my left leg kicks over. I make a thin, sort of shallow hook, and my right leg hooks deep on his, on his hip. And from this position, if I feel like he's a strong guy, he'll start to uppercut his elbow or his armpit, put pressure on the crown of his head. I'm a little heavy, so that happened a little sooner than it than I would have liked it to happen. But the concept is we want to drive as much pressure on the crown of his head as possible, which forces his chin towards his chest. And when you create the asymmetry in the spine, he has to go down. That's typically what will happen. From here, we fight the knuckle line, we attack the neck, and then we always look to hide our bottom hook, whether that manifests as a body triangle or a posterior mouth. So again, that that that's whether we're on the overarm side or the underarm side. We're always hiding that bottom foot. Hammer made jiu jitsu, doesn't matter. We're always hiding that, that bottom foot. You got to that one last time? Yeah. So, I got sway down. Let's say we, get, we hit the goal behind. We're already behind the guy. To build. Maybe we tried to break him down. We're having a hard time. This is an option. We kick through. We take a shallow and a deep hook. We go far side underhook. We put pressure on the crown. We dive our forward arm down to the mat. And then from here, we end the position where we can start hitting all of our traps that we typically like to hit. We can create an uncontested strangle and get the finish there. Let's try it on three. One, two, three. Toasty!